Hey, and welcome to the latest episode of the Mind Body Health Podcast with me, Dave Sheehan, high performance consultant, and I'm um, here dedicated for over 25 years now to helping to educate, motivate, inspire you to regain control of your life, especially the mind, body, health area of your life, and then experiencing the catalytic impact of that in all areas of your life. I literally dedicate every day, it's like through this podcast and all the stuff I put out across all social media and you know clients I work with around the world, it's all to try and make a positive impact. I live each day, aim to make a positive impact, and you know I hope you do too, and I encourage you to do so. We all can have a positive impact on other people. We don't have to be coaches. We all have life experiences we can share. We all have ears we can listen with. We all have brains we can use to share experiences or share advice. Everything is valuable, but we can all make a positive impact. And even something as simple as smiling at someone as you pass them by can have a positive impact. Never underestimate the power of simple little action. So we're up to episode 11 here. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. I've been loving the feedback, loving the private messages, the ratings, the reviews. Keep it coming. Keep sharing them out there. And what am I going to speak about on this episode of the podcast? Well, in this particular episode, what I've decided is to speak about why diets don't work and why diets will never work. So why diets don't work and why diets will never, ever work. Now, of course, there's always exceptions. And some people will be screaming out, hey, I was on a diet and it worked for me and look at me and I look amazing. For the vast majority, 99.999999% of people, it will never work. There's exceptions in everything. And even if a diet is so, so wrong and so bad on so many levels, from a health perspective, especially and longevity and all the negative impact it may have there'll always be some people who'll follow it like people thought the atkins diet was good for a while till he died of a heart attack and other people had many issues but there's still people who will live by it and swear by it so look there's always it's like everything like diets nearly have cultish following as much as religions and politics and different policies and different things but the reality is that diets don't work and diets will never work. And that's for the vast, vast majority of people on the planet. And I'm sure you have had a roller coaster journey. Majority of people have, where literally you might follow some type of diet or plan. Now, when I say diet, I don't just mean nutrition. That can incorporate an exercise program or exercise pro plan or something like that, because typically people do both. You know, some people will do just diet, like in terms of nutrition. Other people do a diet where they do exercise and nutrition. Others may incorporate even a detox as part of it or as their sole element of diet. Some people just don't eat. That's their diet. Okay. So what I want to go through in this episode is the whole kind of psychological basis of it and why you're deemed to fail before you even start. Okay. Now, one important point is and I just said it even a couple of minutes ago, I'm sure you listen to this right now, that in your life up to this point, you followed a couple of diets. You know, you, you had different phases where you decide, okay, I'm getting in shape now, whether it be for a wedding, for Christmas, for a holiday, you just felt disgusted in yourself and you wanted to get in shape for it, for a competition, for a photo shoot, for a job, for many different reasons, okay? Short term. Now, you did that. And you may have got results. People, the bottom line is, if you stick to any diet, it doesn't matter whether it's a healthy one or a completely toxic, unhealthy one. But if you stick to whatever the plan is, I can guarantee you, you will get results. And you can get amazing results with some diets that are out there right now, okay? And that have been there for many years. However, what's most important is what happens after you finish it. What happens long-term? What are the possible side effects and negatives of having done it for that period of time? Now, the most immediate one is that people do a diet, they do for a little while, and what happens then, they eventually reach a point where it be the final day, like they do a four-week one, six-week one, a 12-week one, you know, something like that, or they fall off the wagon during a particular dieting phase, and what happens? They go back to old habits, okay? So whether you stick rigidly to the diet for a period of time, or you happen to fall off during, during the, the period of time you're on the diet, you will reach a point typically where you fall off. And you go back to old habits, you revert to old habits. Now that can revert to old habits because you fell off and you're pissed off with yourself and you get down in yourself and you hammer yourself. Why did I do it? I ruined everything, even though it might've been just a bar of chocolate or something, but you've ruined everything. So I'm just going to go back to my old bad habits because of course that's going to solve it. But that's like, this is how illogical the way the human mind works. Like we're always very careful with ourselves. We're always very good to ourselves when it comes to these kind of bad habits, which is pretty crazy. Um, but we convince ourselves that it's right to drop it all, even though we could have had weeks or months where we've been really, really good. So it's very important that 
we understand from a psychological point of view what happens. And what happens is like, again, people go back to their old habits. Other people, they'll have made great progress. They're feeling really good. They're less disgusted in themselves. They like how they look. They then start to get a bit complacent and start to think, oh, it's okay if I have a little bit more chocolate or cake or more food or eat late at night. Sure, look, I'm looking pretty good now. I feel pretty good. Or it's a case of, um, you know, less disgust in themselves and or some life event happens or stress or something like that and people take their, their foot off the pedal and then it gradually starts to slip in and it gets worse and worse and worse okay well the bottom line is that you know before you even start to constantly you're beaten that's the thing about a diet when you go on a diet when you make the decision to constantly go on a diet subconsciously you've lost okay and why is that it's because diets always have an end point we see diet as a phase of our life a period of time two weeks four weeks six weeks 12 weeks six months not even that long usually usually something two to 12 weeks okay we see there's a period of time and we usually follow something that's extreme very extreme compared to what we're doing even if it's a good diet in terms of it's got a good basis in terms of the elements of it in terms of from a health perspective and even a psychological perspective it's still usually like chalk and cheese compared to what we're used to doing and when you go from what you're doing to something that's so different to what you're used to doing the only reason you stick to it is because you're very determined and if you know you're very stubborn and you'll stick to it you'll stick to it for that period of time but subconsciously you've decided okay i'm going to do it till this date or i'm going to do it for this month or i'm going to do it till 12 weeks are up which means the second that that date hits if you get there and it's important if you get there subconsciously you switch but off again that's why for most people to get to the date they may have done amazing or they may not even have got to the date might have fallen off early or midway or whenever but once you get there the foot's off the pedal in terms of your psychology and your mind and your subconscious and you start to let things slip again and once you start to let things slip again it gets worse and worse and worse and eventually then you're going back to normal okay and this is why so many people yo-yo and the worst thing in life talk about psychological trauma you know, constant psychological trauma and battling in your mind, constant yo-yo, nothing worse than doing great, getting the results, and then you throw it all away again, starting all over again, throw it all away again, start all over again. It's terrible. That's why subconsciously, you before you even start the diet phase, you believe you're not going to stick to it anyway, because your mind will remember previous experiences. That's all it has to go by. You know, that's why new experiences tend to be really great and, you know, we thrive on them and they energize us and empower us and stuff like that. But when you're doing something again, the same kind of procedure, you know, your mind, your subconscious, it recognizes it and it automatically is waiting for that day to fall off. And this is why diets don't work and why they will never work. And the thing is, the whole fitness, diet, wellness industry that promotes all these diets and potions and pills and detoxes and powders and drinks and fat loss teas and all this type of stuff and extreme regime programs like 12-week programs, 8-week, 36 days, all this kind of stuff. It's a trap. Like, it's an industry. Look, the reality is all these industries are only interested in profit. They are not interested in you as an individual. Like, if the world and its industries was truly interested in the health of the population, improving it, we would live in a very, very different world. A world where there'd be way less inequality. Like, the divide between different types of people and demographics and countries is absolutely astounding. It is not that hard to get people to look pretty decent, to have good health and to decrease and even wipe out many diseases that are out there. But that doesn't make money. Healthy people do not make money. Unhealthy people make money. And that's why all the industries, while they put out there as if they're trying to help you and they're giving you all these solutions, that's why these solutions never work. They never work because they want you to go on the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And the fitness, health, wellness industry is no different. The supplement industry, no different. The weight loss, diet, all these different sectors of kind of the same industry, they have no interest in you getting in better shape because if you do, that's the end of your spending, okay? And that then doesn't feed the pharmaceutical and medical industry and all this type of stuff. So I won't go into all that, but you know, this is the reality. And this is why I'm always stressing, you need to take personal responsibility because everything, it's a choice and there are no excuses. There are no valid excuses, okay? And this is why in terms of diets, and I hope what I've said have, has made sense to you and reframed how you think about diets. This is why when I work with people and even with all the material I put out there, it's always focused on the long-term. It's always focused on your lifelong long living your life experience because we all should live till 100 or even up towards 130 what stops us doing that is our lifestyle and our habits and there's lots of bad lifestyle habits 
like all the bad things we put in our bodies, all the toxic stuff we can put in, all the inactivity we can have. And diets play a part in this because for a phase of our life, multiple times in our lifetime, usually, we're doing something that's not good for us. We're restricting certain types of nutrients. We're restricting our calories far too much. We're eating too much of certain foods. We're, wor we're worsening our whole psychology because the reality is when you feel that you fail at something, it's going to release negative hormones. It's going to release stress hormones. It's going to make you feel bad. It's going to increase fat levels. It's going to put stress in your body, stress in your mind. It's not going to be good for you, okay? Because any kind of stress is not good for you. And diets are major in doing this to people. So the, the only diet, and I hate the word diet anyway. I try not to use it. I use it like nutrition plan or lifestyle plan. That's what I use with clients or in stuff I put out there. I hate the word diet because if you look at it, diet, the first three letters are what? D-I-E. That's what happens to your body when you're on diets. Now you might think, Christ, that sounds extreme. You're hardly killing your body if you're on a diet. Now, come on, that's extreme, Dave. No, it's not. It's slowly, like depending on what you do, if you do diets, majority of diets out there are not healthy. They just are not healthy. They're too restrictive, whether it be on the calories, whether it be on the overconsumption of certain types of nutrients, whether it be taking lots of supplements, whether it be doing certain types of detoxes, you know, overextended fasting periods, things like that. There's so many diets out there that every time you're doing them, because they're so extreme and because they're such a jump from what you're used to doing, what happens is that it's too much of a shock to your body. And then what you do when you come off that diet is always the total opposite. And that's not good for your body. Extremes are never good. And as I said, psychologically, it's hurting you anyway. And it makes you, it gets you in a position where subconsciously you're already beaten before you start any diet. Now you're already beaten. You might feel enthusiastic, you may feel empowered, you may feel ready. I'm doing it this time. How many people in my life in my career, especially in over 25 years doing this, have people told me I'm ready this time, I'm doing it this time. People I don't know as well as people I've worked with. You're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands. Okay. I mean, thousands. But what's really going on subconsciously, they're going, yeah, yeah, you're going to do it. Like last time, is it? Nah, give it two weeks, give it a month, do your usual. You'll give it everything, give it welly, then you fall off at the end. That's what your subconscious is saying. You're already beat before you start. And that's the reality for most people. That's what's happening. So what should you do instead? Focus on lifestyle. Focus on long-term. Focus on a lifestyle plan, a nutrition plan, exercise plan for life, long-term. Now, does that mean you can't get results short-term? Of course not. I get incredible results with clients short-term, but we always do things in a healthy way. It's like when I do detoxes with clients, which are very beneficial when done correctly, just like fasts are, it's a case of doing these things correctly. When you fast do a fasting program properly when you do a detox program properly the benefits are massive for your health for your body for your fat levels for your your uh, disease prevention for your brain function for everything okay so they are very beneficial the problem is that the diet industry spins these things that are very valuable and beneficial and turns them into something that's not anymore because it makes money and it's recurring 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 because you just put another spin on it and the same people go and purchase that or bring out a range of products and it's like a short-term hit it's like all these diets come out typically they come out and they've got a book they might have an online program they might have an exercise program with it they have supplements with it they've got detoxes with it and they know there's thousands thousands if not millions and millions of people will will always pay for these things once it has enough marketing behind it to get people hyped up it's like the way the infomercials were before and people spend fortunes to make a quick kill in short period of time and then a diet it disappears or the diet might take another angle and the same kind of process again. You know, you think about it. What diets have stood the test of time? They don't happen. They're here for a short, certain period of time and then they're gone. It's like the Atkins. Like Atkins is still there a little bit now, but it was in its heyday probably, what, 20, 30 years ago? Now it's all about paleo and keto. But that'll have its, it, that'll have its day too. That'll go in the next five, 10 years. It'll start to disappear and it'll be something else. So there's always something else because these are not realistic long-term plans. They will not get long-term benefits. You will not keep the results long-term. So when I work with clients or I'm speaking to you on this right now, I'm stressing to you the importance of, see, this is your last journey. I always say this with clients first time. This is your last journey. No more yo-yoing, no more diets. This is a lifestyle plan you're going to go on with your nutrition, with your exercise, with your mindset, with your sleep, with your self-time and lifestyle management, all these different aspects. This is the last time you're going to face this battle because from here on in, it's continuous improvement, continuous improvement. And it's about consistent steps in the right direction. So what you need to do is you need to look at what you're doing right now and then what you should be doing and then be better. And I always stress this every day, be better than the day before every week, be better than the week before. And once you're doing that, you're going the right direction. Now, how, 
biggest step you could take in a forward direction is up to you. You know yourself better than anyone. As I said, diets simply are just too big a leap. Like they're like, literally like a, a gigantic leap that's impossible. What you do is you push yourself as far as you're able, especially if you've got a short-term target. Maybe you want to achieve a certain result in four weeks, but do it in a healthy way. Once it's a realistic target to have, because sometimes people are very unrealistic in what they're aiming for. So when once it's a realistic target, and I mean pushing boundaries, on top of very safe targets, people can achieve a lot in a short space of time once they are on a realistic, proper plan that focuses on what the essence of them as a person actually is, what their history has shown that they will stick with and won't stick with. Because it's like they say, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, how can you expect a different result? And that's what people do with diets. They've proven they will never stick to a diet properly, yet they keep going on different diets. They've proven that they hate doing extreme exercise plans, but they'll do another ex extreme exercise plan. No, they've proven in the history. You've proved in your history, by the way you've lived, what you will and you won't do. So take the good ingredients, and amplify them, take the ingredients that you won't stick to and just don't do them and keep looking at how can I improve? Because that's all that matters. How can I improve? That's all that ever matters, you know, and be better and better and better. So I'm not saying don't have short term results and don't aim for them. Of course, it's important you aim for them. It's important you have them and important you're going for them. We have to have targets, you know, at a cellular level, we're either growing or we're dying. OK, so it's important for us to always strive for more. I'm always striving for more. And a lot of people tell me, you know, they would think I'm in incredible shape, but I still want more because there's me, and my own goals, what I want to look like and feel like and be able to do. But also it's a challenge to myself constantly. I'm always challenging myself, challenging myself physically and mentally, professionally, every single way in life, because that's. That's what living a fulfilling life's about. And I want the psychological torture of the diet to end for you. You know, you want to look good, you can look good. You want to feel good, you can feel good. You know, you want to be able to see a toned midsection or even a six pack. You want a tight ass. You want to have a, if you're a guy like, you know, a tight chest and nice arms, you know, ladies, very toned arm, whatever it might be you're looking for, you can have it. You can look healthy. Too many people might get to certain results and they look unhealthy. You can be, you can have it all. You can have it all, but you have to adopt patience. You have to adopt consistency. You have to get the right kind of plan. And again, where are you now? What should you do? What am I doing next? How am I improving? How far can I go? What's realistic for me? Like if you have 10 cans of Coke a day, it's not realistic to go, I'm not having any Coke for a month. You might do it if you're very determined, but at the end of that month, you're going to go fucking crazy on the Coke. What's better is saying for maybe eight for a week, then go for seven and six and keep building it up bit by bit. But folks and adding, Again, it's like diets. Diets is about elimination, okay? So you're eliminating stuff. You're taking stuff out. You can never have stuff again. Look, listen to the words, eliminate. You know, deprivation, never. Can't have, limit. Negative, negative, negative. What does negative language do? It creates negative energy. It creates a desire and a want for those exact things that you can't have. Instead, focus on adding. If you focus on adding things, like add more exercise, add more stretching, add more general activity, moving more, add... Um, more fruits and vegetables, add more plant-based meals, add more water, add more sleep, add a sleep routine, add meditation, all these addings. When you're adding these things, it creates positive energy because you're adding, you feel good about adding. It's like people having wins. You know, if you identify your wins in a day, it's positive, creates positive energy. So this is a total opposite to diet mentality where it's all negative energy and you're focused on what you're cutting out, what you can't have, feeling deprived, what you have to eliminate, and you're desperately dying for that day to come when it's over. Whereas when you're focused on adding, you're feeling good, you're feeling energized, you're feeling empowered, your brain's working better, your body's working better, your bowel movements are better, your fat levels are better, your muscle tone is better. You have a spring in your step, you feel good, you feel energized, your focus, your mood, everything's improved. You're going the right direction. And once you keep going that direction, it's inevitable you're going to get success, whatever that is for you, whatever aesthetically you want to look like, whatever you want to feel like. You can have it, but you have to be consistent, have to be patient, and you have to take steps in the right direction. That's a positive improvement of where you are right now. So forget your diets. Diets don't work, and they never, ever will work. What will work is a consistently improving lifestyle plan. As I said, I am in a lifestyle right now that most people do not, do not even come close to. I would say, you know, in terms of the way I live, I would say I'm in top, top probably 10% in the world. Maybe better, I don't know. But that's an estimate, right? But it's taken me years to get to this point. 10 years ago, was it this healthy and, you know, um, as good in terms of how I take care of my body? No. 
my mind, every aspect of me. No, I wasn't. It's gradual. It's a gradual move in the right direction. So I'm continuously improving. And I'll always keep looking to improve because I take pride and import and i see importance in longevity and in terms of taking care of my body and my health and i want to live on well into my hundreds i'm not going to do that if i don't do the right things it's all about the decisions you make like i said take personal responsibility it's a choice no excuses and that's what we need to focus on so please guys forget the diet wipe that word out of your vocabulary it's like the weighing scales i get people to get rid of that weighing scales the only people who have weighing scales are the people that you don't like give your weighing scales to someone you don't like that you want to psychologically torture because that's all your weighing scale is going to do you know if you look good you know if your clothes feel good you can see if you look good take photos take measurements take body fat these kind of things that will really show whether you're in better shape or not that's what matters okay so diets don't work they will never work i hope this has made sense i welcome and encourage you to let me know any questions or comments or opinions you have an anything i've said leave a rating and review if you're watching this on uh, itunes apple Podcasts. feel free to shoot me a message a private message if you want to discuss any of this with me and i uh, just keep focused keep taking action and remember when you get control of the mind body and health area of your life it's a, has a catalytic impact on every other area of your life even without you focus on them so prioritize it get control of this area mind body and health and i can guarantee you your life will never be the same again because you like me like everyone can have a fun vibrant fulfilling successful and most importantly happy life but it's about us taking the right action making the right decisions being in control of our mindset, being in control of our body, being in control of our health. Are you? What steps do you take to move in that direction? This is Dave Sheen here, High Performance Consultant. I hope that has helped you. Keep sharing the, the Mind Body Health podcast out there far and wide. Let's get people to listen to it. Let's change lives together. Let's live our lives to make a positive impact on the world and change it for the way it is. Take care, guys. Look forward to speaking to you on the next episode.